going to show you how to make custom brushes from scratch. I'm in my favorite photo editor, Photoshop. And in Photoshop, I'm making a low resolution image texture that I can bring into Blender to make my own custom brushes. So in Blender, my biggest concern is that I don't want the image texture to look like it's repeating too obviously. So I'm going into Blender and testing out the brush, going back into Photoshop and making adjustments. So right here, I've switched the default pen that the, the brush is on so that it doesn't have the tapering at the end. And right here under the vertex color, I can swap out the color really easily without having to adjust the material and change the hue of the, the brush. And I'm demonstrating here that I can quickly sculpt the brush to make use of its vector functionality. Because Grease Pencil is treated as an object in Blender, I can quickly stack modifiers such as noise to add a little bit animation boil for a stylistic effect. I can use the timeline here and use Sculpt without having to actually draw the rake lines over and over again. I can just sculpt and move my brush strokes for the desired effect. In combination with Onion Skin, I can just sculpt the lines to the desired spacing. And there we go, we got some warbly crispy bacon. Let's add a little fella here to kind of show how this could be used as an animation effect. Let's toggle the multi-frame button here so that I can draw my character on all selected frames. So let's give him a head, little two dot eyes here. And there we go, a little fella who's a little bit too surprised about the warbling bacon. Back in Photoshop, I'm going to talk more about the brush making process. As you notice, I'm making the brush from left to right. And the reason that is because the way Blender interprets brushes or the image texture of the brush is from left to right. So if you want your stroke to connect cohesively, you need to apply the stroke from left to right and not from top down. So I'm making a crayon brush in this moment. So I'm trying to balance the negative spacing from the black and the transparent part of the brush that is not black. Because what you want to do is you want to export this brush as a transparent image. It's just so that the black shows up. Because when you blend it in Blender, it'll allow you to make a brush where the negative space is transparent in the brush and not white because you don't want the transparent areas to leave a white mark just in case you want to overlap the brush. Here I'm hopping back in Blender and stacking the brush to see the feel of the brush and to me this is really good because I can stack the brush over and over to get a little bit more deeper grain and this was inspired basically by crayons and I love the texture that you can get with crayons. I wanted to get that into Blender because I haven't seen that yet. So back in Photoshop, I'm trying to make a ink pen that kind of has grain on the sides to make the brush look more organic. Because most of the brushes in Blender right now are just solid brushes. So I've been I've been inspired by, you know, like Shiyun Kim's brush in Photoshop. He adds a lot of grain textures to his brush that helps the line feel more organic. So I'm trying to do the same with the limitation that Blender has where it, it can only apply the image texture in one direction. It, it's not able to kind of rotate the noise around. So I'm trying to make a brush that works in those limitations. So in Blender, I can swap out the materials really easily by switching the style to texture and opening the, the transparent PNG that has the texture on it by clicking that file folder there. And right now I switch it to a different texture just to demonstrate that. A little fun thing you can do is that if you are using vertex color for your strokes, you can use a randomizer under the stroke tab to allow a little bit of random hue jitter to your stroke. Under your active tool and workspace settings, there are these shield icons that represent your brush. You want to make sure those are toggled on. That way it saves the data of your brush file in the blend file. Otherwise, if those shield icons are not on, then it won't be saving your brush settings. And also make sure that you pin your material to your brush. In order to have different 
brush strokes on the same grease pencil object, you need to assign different materials for each of your image texture brush strokes. Otherwise, you can only have one stroke per grease pencil object. Like mentioned earlier, once you make your material, you're going to want to pin that material to your brush so that every time you toggle your brush on, it assigns to that material. Now, if you notice, we now have two different brush stroke types in the same grease pencil object because now we have two different materials assigned for them. To duplicate brushes, all you have to do is simply click the number next to the title name of your brush. In this case, it's the, the two here. So if I click this two, it should duplicate the brush for me. As you see in the upper left, the title has changed to a dot zero zero one. So I'm just going to rename that real quick to a different brush name. And I'm just going to repeat that process for all the brushes that I made image textures for. So this one's for my toothy brush here. I go into the style, change it to texture, open up the location of that file texture. I make sure under active workspace that the brush settings has the material assigned to it under toothy. And we can see the brush working as intended. We have that tapering to the brush that the original default pen had, but the grain to the texture. I set my blend all the way up to one so that my pen blends with the material or vertex color that I assign it. I stack the brush to make sure there's no weird overlapping. And here's a reference sheet of all the brushes that I've made. It's basically repeating the process of making those materials for the brushes and pinning them to the correct brush set. If you would like to see the full set, it will be available on my Gumroad, linked to the description down below. So go ahead and check it out. And there I'll have one or two free brushes from this set for you to try out. And I hope that this tutorial video or the brushes help inspire you to try out something completely new with Blender. And I know Blender can seem daunting at first, but I'm hoping that this tutorial or my brush set can help inspire you to make something completely different that hasn't been done yet in Blender. Uh, there's a lot of cool stylization that can still be experimented and explored with within the program that I think not a lot of people have gotten to try out yet. As for myself, I'm trying to experiment and explore what I can do as well. So if you want to see more of me do that, then make sure to subscribe. It lets me know that there is an audience for this and I can keep posting and pushing more content to YouTube so that I can connect with more people who want to develop in their own style as well. I, I want to carry over a lot of the 2D styles and techniques that I've learned and bring it into 3D. I had a lot of fun making this crayon brush here and from the polls it looks like that you guys want this one for free and I don't mind sharing this for free. I think this is should be the one that should be free because it, it is uniquely something that I thought would be cool in Blender. Uh, we've seen the rakes before a lot in other imaging software like Photoshop, but the crayon I think is a fun one that should be available to people. So thanks again for voting for that guys. It looks like it's going to win this Saturday. So stay tuned and keep an eye out on that gum road. Some other notable brushes that I made include this comic tone fill brush, which is obviously inspired by the spider verse and just comics in general. I wanted to have counterpart that I could use in Blender. Uh, and so I have a fill version as well as a stroke version included in the blend file. When you adjust the scale of the brushes, make sure to adjust the UV factor as well to control the density of how the texture is applied. Simply adjust those factors until the brush feels right for you. It'll often be the case that you don't have the thumbnail for the brush you just made quite yet. So what you can do is you can render your thumbnails from your blend file and go down to the active workspace settings to change the thumbnail. That way when you go to your brush settings or your, your brush browser, you have the visibility of your thumbnail to help show which brush you're using. And here's the final set for all the brushes. Thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Just as always, subscribe, uh, keep updated, and hope you guys have a nice day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.